We are Heather and Paul Christie. And for over 12 years, we've worked with executives and entrepreneurs to accelerate change in every aspect of their business. Because we are in the fastest paced business environment that anyone has ever seen before. So join us for the Evolve to Win Show. Welcome back to the Evolve to Win Show. This is Heather, and as you can see, I'm not with Paul today. This is Justin Crom. Say hi, Justin. Hi. Nice to be here. Thank you very much, Heather. Oh my gosh. It's so fun to have you here, Justin. Um, thank you. And our show today is Why You Need Drama in the Workplace. And I don't know about you out there, but I've certainly experienced drama in the workplace, and you would think that you'd never need that. But our guest today, Justin Crom, is going to tell us exactly why we need drama in the workplace. Trust me, you need drama. <laughs> okay, and the so the right type of drama. It's the, it's the right type of drama, of course. Um, now, I want to help you understand who Justin is and how we got connected. So he is officially our newest foreign exchange student, and Justin comes to us well immediately from the Netherlands, but he's studying right now in London at the Royal School of Speech and Drama. So uh, you are a good one to talk to about bringing drama to the workplace. I know, then it is. Um, so, but the reason that Justin has found us or we have found him is because he is a second generation foreign exchange student. And what I mean by that is Justin's mother, Marlene, is my Dutch sister. So we had her come over back in 1982 when I was just a kid. That I know it's a long, long know, time ago. You weren't around then. Um, so Marlene came and stayed with us as a foreign exchange student from the Netherlands. And the reason that we brought her in, or I should say my parents brought her in back in the day, is because my mother was actually a foreign exchange student and she went to Holland for a year when she was a young girl. So no when she way. was in high school, yeah. She won a competition, a, a scholastic competition in high school and was the one student chosen to go and travel over to the Netherlands. So I think she lived in Utrecht at the time. No way. Yeah, you didn't know that part, I huh? I didn't even know that part. So that's how we had the idea to bring Marlene, and that's why we chose the Netherlands, and that's how you came to stay with us. Wow. But is there is there anything else on your part, Justin? So you mm. Okay, so think about this. He is between his first and second year in college in London, and he has chosen to come and spend an entire month in the United States when he could really be doing a whole lot of different things and having a whole lot of fun in different places around the world. Why did you choose to come to the U.S.? I mean, Florida's fun. Don't yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, I wanted to visit you and Paul because you guys have had, what, 15 plus years of experience in helping people grow, helping them evolve. And through all the different workshops and webinars and presentations you guys do, I wanted to see where can I use my drama, the things I'm learning at school right now, where can I implement it in what you guys do? So awesome. yeah. Oh my gosh, so we, we are so thrilled about this because we could use a little more drama in our lives for sure. But you know, I was thinking when we first started talking about you coming to stay with us and figuring out how we can implement some of what you're studying in university right now, and by the way, your major in your school, like this, you, tell us a little bit about the school and how specific it is for mm. this particular, um, you know, factor. You know, the, it's, it's not just a school about drama or performing out arts. You have some courses that you're taking that are really unique to your school, yeah. correct? Yeah, it's the, it's the only school in the world, I think, really, that teaches a subject called applied theater, which basically right. teaches you how to use theater outside of the normal theater setting that sounds confusing no but just, okay say it again though because i think this is really cool and i want everybody who's listening to think about what this right. means right so all around us during our daily lives and whatever we do there's theater that's the philosophy of my course and you go around and you learn well what is it about this one thing that i can use my theater knowledge to get better in. So whether that's communicating with others, whether that's storytelling, more mm. often it's storytelling than anything else. Or what is it about directing? You know, directing is something you learn in theater and drama, but when you coach someone or when you tell them to do something, you're actually directing them as well. So it's a very specific course that looks at what can we learn from acting from the stage, from drama, but use it somewhere else. Any interaction you have is at least that's what my school says, is a piece of drama or is a piece of theater. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is this is really fascinating because applied theater, first of all, I had never heard of until mm-hmm. we started talking about it this past weekend. And when you, th- I just I think about all the different aspects of our business, and of course, our focus is in the space of leadership and growth, right. helping right. people to grow personally and professionally. And I, there's definitely an element to drama with everything that we do. We, I mean, we sort of, you know, we put on workshops and we, you know, mm. put on, we do keynotes. We get hired to go and do keynotes, and there's a, a huge amount of opportunity for us to get better in our our theatrics, yeah. right? I mean, after all, you are talking about behavior, right? You're talking about how people behave, why leaders behave in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Which, when you're talking about behavior, you're automatically talking about drama or an actor or how they present themselves. Yeah. And yet most people, so here's what's really interesting. Most people don't get intentional enough about how they're behaving. Exactly. About how they're communicating. They just do their thing, uh, their habitual way of being, which, Mm -hmm. you know, works sometimes and doesn't work other times, especially when we're stressed out. Yeah. But if you got more intentional, because we teach this theory called dynamic adaptation. It's right. about really understanding what someone else's behavioral communication preferences are and how I can be dynamic and adapt to you so that we have better rapport and ultimately um, a better relationship. Right. You know, everything is based on a foundation of trust. And Which- so there's theatrics to adapting. It's what an actor does. If an actor sees their audience is laughing for longer, then he'll, or a comedian, for example, if they see their audience is laughing, then they'll they'll maybe say the joke again, or you know, make the joke longer, or whatever they need to do. But it's constantly being able to adapt to your audience and adapt to what's happening around you. That's what people on stage do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's really cool. Very interesting. Now, when you think about applied theater, um, I'd like you to give us a specific example of of how you have experienced already bringing drama into the workplace. And you know, you you may be able to hear some thunder in the background. It reminds me why we like to film this earlier in the day, um, but we'll just ignore the thunder, we're fine. Okay, um, so give me an example of, of how you have actually, from a practical perspective, brought drama into the workplace to improve results in some way, shape or form. So I think it started about a year ago, which is right before I was going to go to university and I finished high school, which is like the longest summer of your life. <laughs> and I decided, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to do a bartending course, which was the newest, the biggest thing I'd ever done. And I spent four weeks in New York learning bartending, learning all these amazing theories and tricks and recipes and whatnot. Mm. Then I left the course thinking, this is great, I'll be able to have a bartending job while I'm studying. Um, but... I don't know, I felt empty. The course just didn't teach me something. I was like, oh, I, don't, I don't know what it is. Well, I knew the recipes, but I, I didn't feel like a bartender, I'll put it that way. Okay. So I applied to all these different jobs and eventually I got a job. And then my first hour of my first shift, I realized immediately what it was. They just taught us the recipes, but they didn't teach us how to behave behind the bar. And after wow. all, a bartender is just an actor with an intention. That's what I've come to realize. Cause you're not just selling a drink. No one goes to a bar to get a drink. This is, I mean, let that sink in. It sounds weird. Yeah, no, I get it. You won't go to a bar to get a drink because otherwise you just drink at home. You wouldn't have to go to a bar. That's right. So you go to a bar for an experience, for the bartender, for the story, for someone selling you a drink. And so I worked at a bar for about four or five months. And at the same time studying what I'm studying, I realized this is it. This is when I started using drama in the workplace. And so was this in London? This that was you were, in London. Okay, yeah. so you're working four or five months at a bar in mm-hmm, London. Mm-hmm. I want to go back to what you said because this is so stinking cool. Um, there's two major things that I had to stop on. One is you recognized that they taught you the recipes, but they didn't taught you. They didn't teach yeah. you how to behave. So, so they taught you the technical skill right. of bartending. And I want you to think about how often this happens in the workplace. And you may not know this, but it happens all the time, where we teach, like you, you onboard somebody into your company, and you have to teach them a skill, a system, a process for how to do their job. But if you miss the part of who do you need to be as you're doing the do, right? Mm -hmm. So they taught you how to do what you needed to do, but they didn't teach you how to be. And there's like those two things together are the formula for success. Exactly. So, but you knew because of your studies that you could bring that into it. So that is awesome that you figured that out. So you said a bartender is just an actor with intention. Yeah. Isn't that what we all are though? 
I mean, isn't I mean, every role? I know. That's when you think about it, it's true. So I started bartending and I, I started, I started making my drinks and I started, you know, someone would order a drink and I'd sell them the drink and that'd be it. And then I realized, well, there's more to this. There has to be more to just a drink. I mean, why would you come to a bar? It has to be an experience. And then so I started preaching to my colleagues and I started experimenting with how can I get more out of this person than just a drink or than just like a few bucks for their beer. And um, I started being an actor essentially behind the bar. So someone would walk in and they'd be a bit low or down. It's like, oh, just get me a beer just and that's all I want. And then I'd talk to them and I'd go with them. I'd tell them a story in the hope that I could sell them more or sell them maybe two beers or something else or a cocktail or whatever it may be. Which is, you know, for the company, it's great because they're making more revenue. Mm -hmm. For them, it's great because they're not just having a drink. They're having an amazing experience, yeah. which means they'll stay longer. And it's one of those things, you know, how can drama change what you do, the interaction you have with a client? Yeah. Gosh, you think about customer experience. Mm -hmm. And this is such a hot topic. How do you, like, who do you need to be to change the dynamic of how the customer feels when they leave you, right? Yep. And so what you did, like, I can't help but think about it. And I'm sure anybody that's my age-ish is thinking to themselves right now about the movie Cocktail with, mm -hmm. isn't that what it's called? With, with Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. Yeah. 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 You've seen it, obviously. Yeah. Um, but that's what I'm imagining I is know. that you, that you like become, that's what I think of what I would think of. I mean, of. look at Tom Cruise. He's the most popular bartender. Everyone loves him. The girls go crazy. And that's because he's got the smooth moves. He's got a line for everything. He talks to them. Yeah. And then you'll see the girls, you know, they stick at the bar. They come around the next day. And yeah. Yeah. That's so, how you sell So did you, did you develop a bit of a following of people who would actually come to hang out at the bar because they were having a great time? I did have a few people that, that would enjoy like me serving them, definitely. Yeah. And there, there's always people that just want their drink, period. Mm -hmm. And then they'll talk to their friends. But there's definitely people that would go to a bar hoping for some interaction, some entertainment. And if I can give it to them, and more importantly, if I can not just give them that entertainment, but make them stay for another drink or mm -hmm. make them buy a more expensive drink... Yeah. That's it. That's all you want. Yeah. And you think about this. So this really goes to if we're thinking about how you measure success in any business, there's there's one piece of the formula that has to do with gaining a customer. Mm -hmm. There's another piece of the formula that has to do with how much the customer spends while they're with you. Right. 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 And how often do they come back? How many times right. do they repeat visit? So you're hitting three major aspects of, That's what I'm hoping of the, for, yeah. the formula. And... I, you know, I'm thinking about how you translate this into all different areas. And I think that, you know, if you think about the business that you're in right now and you ask yourself, well, what if we could put um, some theater into our customer experience? What would that look like? How would mm. we do it? How would we train our team to do it? So what kinds of things are you doing? Like, do you have any, do you have any exercises maybe that you could share that, that, that would be a cool exercise to teach people how to use theater a little bit more in their day to day? I think what, one of the most important things I learned, and this is just one of those things I keep telling myself and telling other bartenders is not every interaction has to be a transaction. So one of the first mm -hmm. things you do when someone walks in is you, you get close to them. You make them want you, you make them want to listen to you. I mean, think about it when you watch a movie, right? We were watching a movie last night and just these characters, they draw you in. You want to know what's going to happen. You want to know what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. The same with this bartender. You're thinking, oh, he's telling all these stories. I want to know. I'm going to stick to this bar. I want, I want to see what happens. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things is definitely, you know, get close to your customer and try to tell a story. Whether it's about what you're selling, whether it's about them or whether it's about you, mm -hmm. tell the story. That's one of the things. Man, what else? There's so much you can do. Try to, try to place yourself in their shoes. Mm -hmm. I think is a big one as well. Okay. So you, so that requires obviously being really perceptive. Right. Right? Really so being perceptive. a great listener, mm -hmm. looking not just for the words people are saying, but watching body language. Are they in a happy mood? Are they sad? Exactly. Are they tired? Like what's going on with that person in the moment? And you know what's interesting is, I, I call it background music. Like you never know what someone's background music is that's going on in their life. Like you may have somebody who walks through your doors whether you're a bartender whether you're a lawyer that whatever business you're in and they may have had something that's just happened in their world maybe something tragic has happened or and you just don't know it and so are you perceptive enough yeah. to know when somebody needs a smile i mean everybody needs a smile right, right. 
but uh, you know to just pick up on what someone needs mm-hmm. in the moment everyone's a can of soda that's how i like to think of it a can of soda yeah. tell me about that well, you never know how shaken up they are until you open them. So they might come into the bar and they sit. <laughs> Have you never heard of this one? I've never heard of this one. Is this a yeah. is this a Dutch thing? No, not even. I, th- uh. I think a lecturer told me at one point is always be careful and always be perceptive. Because, you know, they'll come into your workplace or to the space where you're supposed to welcome them. But you never know how shaken up they are by something that just happened until you start talking to them. Wow. And they open up and you don't know how much that kind of soda is going to fizz. Wow. That's, I don't know. That's a bit of a... That's pretty cool, though. I can yeah. totally get that analogy. It, um, I wouldn't have gotten that on my own, so thank you for walking me through it. <laughs> but th- but th- that is what it takes, is taking... And obviously, you no. Know, with my course, we learn how to be actors and how to place yourself in other people's shoes. But even without having the actor training, always trying to be perceptive of what other people... What signals they're giving off through body language, through facial expressions, where their eyes are going... And trying to fit into that, how much you can push them to buy something or how much you should sometimes think, you know what, I'm going to leave it and maybe they just want to have a great time. Mm -hmm. I'll come back later. Yeah, got it. So I like that. Not every interaction needs to be a transaction. Mm. And yet, probably if you're in a in a sales position, the you you think so much about that goal of the transaction. And sometimes it's that that gets in the way of the transaction. Exactly. Um, so it's allowing someone to be where they are in the moment and mm-hmm. really trying to figure out what the right next step is. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So one other question is you said, you said something about your actor training. So as you're going through school, do you actually have acting classes that are a part of school? Yeah. And what do you, yeah. like, what, what does a day look like in an acting class? Like, are you standing, I picture, I, I wish I had taken acting in college. I didn't get that one. Um, but are you standing up on a stage and like, and and reading lines or what is it? So you're so you start with that's when you're doing a production. Yes, then you'll get a script and a director will tell you what you have to do, where you have to stand, and what kind of facial expressions you have to pull. But for us, most of the time is we walk around. We walk around a space and we discover things about us that we didn't know we had in us so we have to walk around with a very different body language or we'll do a day of just facial expressions where we'll look at each other and try to change i'll change your facial expression by trying to change my facial expression i love that exercise we'll try to do that one as well okay that's fun um so just trying to see what it is in you that you haven't expressed yet which sounds really scary but i don't know being jealous and happy at the same time how, how do you how do you embody that how do you express that through your face and and yeah, and your body. Gosh, so so this is really interesting. In I would imagine then in your actor training, you are really getting in touch with not only what your body language looks like, but what is the impact on other people because of my body language. Right. Exactly. And you're more in tune with the body language from others because of this, because you're so intentional about paying attention. Mm-hmm. And that is such an amazing skill. Yeah. Uh, for emotional intelligence, right? I, That's a massive part of emotional intelligence. And you don't want to know how often I've used that in a bar. So I'll be, I'll be working around, and usually I'm the clown, the one that has a lot of energy and mm-hmm. yells around and, you know, re pipes up the energy. But sometimes you have someone walk in the bar who's, who's very low and just wants a drink or something's bad has happened. And immediately I turn on and I change my body language according to them so that they feel comfortable. Got it. And then I become very aware of how slowly I walk, how my body expresses what I feel. And I try to feel what they're feeling so that, they, so that they're comfortable and they can connect with me. And that's exactly what you're doing is you're connecting. You're right. connecting by matching their emotional state based on where they mm-hmm. are. Now, can you take that and ultimately lift them up? Like that's, that's the, the hope. Goal, that's right? the end goal. If yeah. you can do that, then you're there. But you can't, but you can't be at that super high right. energy level if someone's down here you might turn them off and that's yeah, something they'll else. shut off they're like oh yeah. who's this clown i don't need this energy yeah right you'll I'm see not that up for this yeah. yeah and so that's the other thing when you think about training your team are you just training them to have this high energy mm-hmm. and talk 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 because some people will give you an instant message like uh, you know yeah. i'm fine right now this is too like, much yeah. yeah too much not everyone's like you not everyone's on your level no. The, yeah. No. no. So it's really, really being perceptive, paying attention to the different levels. And oh my gosh, Justin, I think that this kind of training is so incredibly important for our front line, for those who are dealing directly with our clients and our customers. Yep. And 
And I wonder how often this type of training is actually happening, but I'm so glad that you are enlightening us a bit because we, we, are, we don't use the angle of theater, we use the angle of adaptation, but of course there's that theatrical there co component lot. to it. Especially if you have direct contact with your clients, it needs to be there, yeah. 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 Well, what's really interesting is I grew up in the theater because my mom was, uh, right. she, yeah, so she was an actress and a singer and she did off-Broadway kind of stuff, like community theater kind of um, production. So I grew up like with my sleeping bag as a little girl in the theater during rehearsals. And I just remember being in that world all the time. Mm. And it was so fascinating to watch all that, you know, it was yeah. like just fun and exciting and, and like the different levels of emotion that went up and down. And could, could you tell by your mom, she was amazing at communicating with others or yeah. trying to. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm. But I, I couldn't, I really couldn't figure it out at a young age when, when she was in guys and dolls and kissed Nathan and he wasn't my dad. I was like, that's stupid. <laughs> but, yeah. um, yeah, it was, it was just, it was fun to watch. And, um, even, even outside of the production, they were still theatrical with each other. Mm. Right. Do you find that with yeah. your friends in school? Oh, like, do you keep up the, we're constantly the on, on the tip of our toes. We're constantly pushing each other, doing improvisation games, yeah. doing sketches with each other. Um, just cause it's fun. It's energized. And I mean, whenever you want to do this in any type of workplace, drama is fun. If you can teach something through drama or theater, people want to get up. People want to be on stage, want to be in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. And if it's anything that's not them sitting down and listening to a presentation or taking notes or not just letters on a piece of paper, but actually physically trying to embody what someone else is saying or what you're trying to teach them. Mm -hmm. People listen to that. People yeah. do. Yeah. And so you know, that brings up you just in, in training in general, the ability for people to do some type of role play, right? Yeah. Some type of interactive, get them involved, try different things. And you're right, even some of the most introverted. So let's talk about that for a minute, because mm. you said people want to do this acting. Um, and I would think that that there'd be people out there who would say, oh, I'm not sure. You know, we've got some people who are really shy or very introverted. Right. And yet, what's your take on that? That's tough. Those yeah. are tough. People. It's a nice challenge, though. I like it. So what you can say straight off the bat is at least those people like seeing other people being on stage and being happy. Okay. So maybe you won't involve them in the drama games and they'll just sit back. Mm -hmm. But slowly but surely, there'll be a part of them that sees them having a lot of fun. And then maybe there's this inner bit of them that's like, oh, I, I want to get up. I want to start doing it. I want to yeah. start expressing myself more. Yeah. Um, but it's baby steps. It's definitely baby steps. And everyone, like I said, everyone's on different levels. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're giving a workshop, if whether you're a leader or a facilitator or whatever, it's trying to see where you can involve those drama games. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if I would go up to another company soon or give like a training, I wouldn't do the same things I do in my acting class because mm -hmm. that requires a high level of acting and wanting to be out there. Yeah. But even just short exercise that gets people loose, get them on their feet. It gets your creative juices flowing and high results, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, so you just kind of start with where they are in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I know I, I've been part of exercises before in improv where the facilitator, instead of having us get up on stage in front of everybody, we just got to work together in groups of two or three exactly. and do our improv, which is so much less stressful, right? It is, For someone yeah. who's not yeah. ready to get on stage yet. Um, but I do find too that, that, I mean, well, think about it. There are a lot of people who are actually true introverts who are amazing actors, and you would never know that how yeah. introverted they are. So sometimes you actually find access to really helping those who are introverted mm -hmm. come out of their shell because it's easier to play a part, right, and do it for purposes of, of theatrics than it is to find that in and of themselves, yeah. you know, naturally. For those people, it's true. If they're such introverts, they... They don't like putting themselves out there, but if they can put someone else out there, they'd rather do that. If they got a role or a character and they put that out there, yeah. that's fine. As long as they don't have to show their nature. Right. That's often the way the, the, the true introverts see it. And that's why I have a lot of really good introvert actors. So last question I have for you. I mean, of course, we could just keep going and going and going because it's so fascinating to me. And it is fun. Like, I think this mm. conversation is really fun to think about where you can bring theater into the workplace. Um, my question for you is what about the people who are questioning this conversation in any part because they say, well, if you're acting, isn't that inauthentic? And don't you want to be authentic with your customers? What would you say to that? 
every actor, whatever you do, whatever role you play, there's some bit of you in there. Mm. It's really hard to play a character that has nothing to do with you unless you're a professional actor. So if I were to tell you, all right, Heather, I want you to play someone that's really bossy and someone that really stands on top of you. You are automatically going to picture, okay, what am I when I'm really bossy? What am I when I'm really oh, trying to be that leader? Okay. And that is what it's useful for. Because then I can see that and I can go, aha, uh-huh. so this is what you do when you're actually really bossy, for example. So whenever you act, there's always a bit of you that goes with you into that new character. Mm. And that's why it's so extremely powerful. Because that's why you can unlock things in people by letting them be other characters, or putting them in different scenarios where they'll express parts of them that they usually wouldn't yeah got it that's a, that's a really great answer and i can absolutely see that how you you don't just leave yourself behind and be this entirely new person that would be so hard it's yeah. you being this way it's being right. this style and behaving in a certain way and don't get me wrong not for the rest of your life but just for a short exercise seeing what that would feel like to be someone else in a different scenario yeah that's beautiful to that's see kind of what fun. emerges yeah it is, and it's fun, it is fun. yeah Well, Justin, uh, thank you so much for sharing like this ridiculous amount of wisdom that you have as just like, I'm trying to think what I was doing between freshman and sophomore year in college. Mm, I wasn't on podcasts, so (laughs) I don't think anybody was asking my opinion on much. Um, But it's amazing where you are today. And of course, you know, I I know that a lot of that comes you, from the experiences that you've had in your life up until now, and you are you are very worldly, and and you grew up in South America, and you speak lots of languages, and you relate to many different cultures. So you've had a kind of exposure that that really helps you to be wise beyond your years. But I think it has a lot to do with who you are as an individual, because there's a lot of people who have traveled, but they haven't picked up the mm. way that you have. So you're extremely insightful. Um, this conversation I think has been really helpful for me and and hopefully for our listeners out there too. I so, hope so too. if you uh, if you enjoyed this conversation with Justin, please like it, please share it. Um, you know, please please give him some feedback or if you have any questions for him, he'll have this on his uh, at least if you're listening to it on Facebook Live, even on YouTube, you can you can ask some questions while we'll Justin please chime do. in. Yeah. And we can we uh, give people a way to get in touch with you in case they want to get in touch with you directly. Can we leave that in the show notes? Yep. Definitely. Okay. So we will add Justin's contact information in the show notes in case you have any thoughts or please feedback do. or questions yeah. for him. Um, and, and before you try to hire him immediately, just know that there might be a few other people who are going to be hot on your trail. So, uh, no, really he's wherever you land, I, you know, whether you, whether you end up going the entrepreneurial route or you end up, uh, coming back and working with us or for, or some other company, whoever ends up working with you is going to be so, so fortunate to have you on their team. Thank you so much. So thanks for tuning in to the Evolve to Win show. Uh, we do this in partnership with Gulf Shore Business Magazine. Um, if you haven't subscribed to it yet, if you do subscribe, it'll be sent to you directly. And you can always connect with us on LinkedIn or on YouTube. Just search Heather Christie. I'm the one who's not the rock star. Okay, so anyway, have an awesome rest of your day, Dustin. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.